The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. Why, Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you'll love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is... P-A-R-K-A-Y... Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Now let's see what's doing at the great Gildersleeve's house this morning. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Well, the great man seems as jolly as Santa himself as he and his niece and nephew move the furniture around the parlor to make room for the Christmas tree. Leroy, give me a hand with this couch. I'll lift and you shove. Okay, Uncle. I'll hold down the rug, Uncle. All right, Marjorie. Leroy, on the count of three, push. One, two. Leroy, I thought you were going to push. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's far enough anyway, Unky. It's more room than we had last year. Well, we need more room. It's baby's first Christmas, so we're going to have a bigger tree than we've ever had. Oh, that'll be wonderful. You bet. Her real parents may not be around to provide these things, but by George, it's going to be a Christmas you'll remember. At nine months? I don't remember anything until I was six years old. I could answer that, Leroy, but I feel too good this morning. <laughs> well, better get going after that tree. Hey, Uncle, can I go along? Sure, Leroy. We'll need a lot of hands to get this tree home. Oh, boy. Well, if you get a larger tree, we'll need an extra string of lights. Lights. Oh, yes. I'll pick them up at Peavy's when I go downtown. Unky, can I invite Francie and the gang over when we light the tree? We'll have a party. Yeah, and can I ask Piggy and Craig? No, children, this Christmas Eve is going to be different. It's going to be just for the little family and Miss Fairchild. Miss Fairchild? Well, of course, Leroy. We're engaged, you know. She's almost a member of the family. I think a little family party is a good idea. And, Unky, when you get the tree, don't forget to buy some mistletoe. Mistletoe? Well, if you think it'll make a nice decoration around the house, I'll get some. Of course, it doesn't make any difference to me. <laughs> Leroy? <laughs> Get your overshoes on and let's get going after that tree. Okay. Uh, see you later, Marjorie. Better say goodbye to the baby before I go. Uh, Bertie's giving her a bath upstairs. Yes, I know. Deck the halls with boughs of mistletoe. Fa la 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 la. La 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 la. <laughs> Hold still now, baby. Let Bertie wash your back. Well, you seem to have your hands full, Bertie. <laughs> I sure have, Mr. Gill, please. Hello, baby. Kitchy coo. Are you enjoying your bath this morning? <laughs> yeah, you're getting to be quite a splasher, aren't you? <laughs> oh! Sud, right in my eye. <laughs> I better get out of here before I get the bath. Bye bye, baby. I'm on my way to get your first Christmas tree. I saw some fine trees down at the corner market, Mr. Gilsey. Oh, well, thanks, Bertie, but Judge Hooker asked me to buy our Christmas tree from a friend of his. Young man, he's helping to get started here in town. Well, that's nice as a judge. How many people are you going to have over this Christmas Eve, Mr. Gilsleeve? I'd like to know how many to fix for. This year, Bertie, they will be just the family and Miss Fairchild. You mean none of your downtown friends are dropping in? I'll ask them over sometime during the holidays, but I'm not inviting any extra people for Christmas Eve. I didn't think they needed much of an invitation. Well, Christmas Eve is going to be different this year, Bertie. Just for the little family. Even Santa Claus won't get in, unless he has a pass. <laughs> Yeah, the lot's full of them. What color are we going to get this year? White, blue, purple, or pink? We're going to get green, Leroy. It's baby's first Christmas, and we don't want to scare her. Now, where is the judge's friend? Maybe that's him waiting on that lady. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Hey, how about this tree, Uncle? It's a water. How about it? Our tree doesn't have to be that tall, Leroy. 
They charge with a foot, you know. But, Unc. All right. Let's see the price tag. Seven dollars. They must be charging per needle. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah, well, after Christmas, we want to feel that we can afford to throw it away, Leroy. <laughs> Come on, my boy, let's get out of the tall timber. Gosh, I want a big tree. Well, leave it to me, Leroy. Now then, here's one that looks about right for our little parlor. Not as tall, but it's nice and chubby. Well filled out in the top. How about it, Leroy? Yeah, not bad, Unc. Sure, this is the one for us. And the price is only... Oop. Still, Leroy, when you stand back and look at it, maybe it isn't quite the tree for us. What do the tags say? Ten dollars. <laughs> it's a prettier tree, though. Well, did you find one you like? Oh, are uh, you Bob Clark? Yes, I am. Oh, well, I'm Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, city water commissioner. Yes, I know. You do? It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, uh, pleasure to meet you. Uh, this is my nephew, Leroy. Hello, Leroy. Hi. Uh, Judge Hooker asked us to come down and have a look at your trees. Well, that's a fine tree you're looking at. It's a silver tip. Uh, for ten dollars, it must be silver plated. <laughs> <laughs> well, like everything else, tree prices are a little high, I guess. Let's take it, Uncle. What do you say, huh? Well, I think it's a pick of the lot, Mister Gildersleeve. The judge said you should have a tree like this. Oh, the judge did, did he? I think the judge is right, Uncle. Oh, for. Can't the judge let me pick out my own Christmas tree? What an old busybody. Well, uh, you, you well, see... I'll the... take it. Here's your ten dollars. Oh, no. No, uh, that's been taken care of, Mr. Gildersleeve. It has? Uh, judge Hooker asked for the bill. He said to say Merry Christmas to you and your family. Well, fine old fellow, the judge. <laughs> well, I, I certainly think so. It isn't everyone who'll do as much for a fellow as the judge has done for me. Huh? He's even found me a good job in a market starting the first of the year. Yeah, that's the judge, all right. None better. I'll carry the tree over to the car for you, Mr. Gildersleeve, and help you tie it on. Oh, thank you, Bob. Yeah, he's a nice fellow, isn't he, Leroy? Yeah. Yeah, nice thing the judge did, too. But he shouldn't have bought our tree. He's always so helpful around the holidays when he gets lonesome. Leroy, I told you and Marjorie we weren't going to invite anybody over at Christmas Eve, but what do you say we make one exception and invite the judge? Sure. He always brings swell presents. Yeah. <laughs> Leroy, that's not the spirit. Wonder what he'll bring me. <laughs> Hurry up, Floyd. I could shave myself faster than this. What's a rush, Commish? Rome wasn't burned in a day. Uh, I have things to do, Floyd. I want to get some lights for my Christmas tree before they're all gone. Hey, well, let me catch that stray whisker on your chin. Mm -hmm. There. Uh, got a pretty nice tree, Commish? You bet. Uh -huh. I can't wait to see the baby's eyes light up when she sees it. It's her first Christmas, you know. Sort of like the kid, don't you, Commish? Well, she'll do. How long's it been since you found her in the back of your car? Uh, it's been about three months now, I guess. She's about nine months old, Floyd. That's a great age. Funny you never heard anything from the parents. It'll be all right with me if we don't. They're just like a member of our little family now. Yeah, kids kind of get you all right. Okay, Commissioner, you're finished. That's all we can do for that face without plastic surgery. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, you uh, have an open house this year, Commissioner? Uh, no, Floyd. Uh, I decided this Christmas Eve would be just for the family. You understand? Oh, sure, yeah. Kind of hope we'd get together and sing carols, but if you ain't having any outsiders in, I understand. Mm, well, I may as well tell you, Floyd, the judge is coming over. Oh? Judge, huh? Well, you see, Floyd, I just had to invite him. He gave us the tree. Uh-huh. Hey, you are, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're through. You... But, Floyd... The judge paid $10 for that tree. I couldn't ignore that. Of course, I'm just a hard-working barber. What? We always got together in the past, but if you're throwing a party and just letting in the upper crust, 10 bucks cover charge, I guess that lets me out. <laughs> Floyd, it isn't that at all. It's okay. Floyd, don't look so sad. Well? You know how it is with a judge. He never has any place to go on Christmas Eve. Well, the missus has a choir rehearsal at the church that night, and I don't have any place to go either. But that's okay. 
You don't find little Floyd E. Munson crashing in where he ain't wanted. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Floyd, how would you like to drop by my house Christmas Eve? Well, if you really want me. Sure. Okay, Commish, what time? <laughs> Gildersleeve, the trouble with you is you can't say no. Uh, while I'm at it, I guess I should invite Peavy and Chief Gates. No. Peavy's mother-in-law's in town, and if he brought her, I'd... No, sir. Peavy's out. I just won't say anything to Peavy and the Chief. Nothing at all. I'll invite him over New Year's to listen to the Rose Bowl game. <laughs> well, hello, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> What can I do for you this morning? Peavy, I need a string of Christmas tree lights. Oh, you must be going to have a Christmas tree. <laughs> yes, Peavy. Leroy and I got a fine one this morning. Have you bought yours yet? Well, we're not having a tree this year. We're having Mrs. Peavy's mother instead. <laughs> what? We always have to forego a tree when Mother Higgins comes for the holidays. They make her sneeze. Yeah, oh. Uh, that's too bad, Peavy. Now, let's see your lights. Very well. They're over at this counter, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, I always like to be around a tree for a little while come Christmas Eve. You're going to have one, you say? Well, yes, Peavy. Uh, say, you have quite a collection of lights. Uh, which type do you recommend? Well... How about uh, these round ones? They're very nice if you like the round ones. Mm -hmm. How about these pointed ones? They're nice. They have their points... <laughs> oh, brother. Oh, Peavy, here's something new. Bubble candles. Are they any good? They bubble. <laughs> Peavy, you're quite a salesman. I can't resist you. I'll take a string of the ones that bubble. The baby will like those. But I'd like to test them first. Yeah, very well. You hold up the string and I'll plug you in. There. Yeah, look, Peavy, they bubble. That's what it's saying. Well, what's going on here? Oh, hello, Judge. Oh, hello, Judge. Gentlemen. My, that's a pretty sight, Gildy. With all those lights draped around you, you look just like a big, fat Christmas tree. <laughs> Horace, I don't know how you can be such an old goat and such a nice guy at the same time. That was wonderful of you to buy the tree for our little family. Happy to do it, Gildy. And by the way... I saw Leroy, and he extended me your kind invitation to come... Judge, we'll discuss that later. What's the matter, Gildy? Is it such a big secret that you've invited me over for Christmas Eve? Isn't everybody coming? <laughs> <laughs> Would uh, you gentlemen like me to step in the back room? Yeah. <laughs> Peavy, we're having just a quiet family Christmas Eve. But the judge presented us with a tree, and we appreciate it, so we invited him over. Well, how much are the lights? How much? It's Christmas, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'd like to present you with these lights, compliments of Peavy's Pharmacy. Oh, for... <laughs> Peavy, how would you like to drop in for a little while Christmas Eve? Are you sure I won't be one too many? Oh, no. In fact, I might as well invite Chief Gates, too. By the way, Gildy, I wonder if I could bring someone. Judge, this is just a family party for the baby and the kids. And Adeline, of course. And you, and Floyd, and Peavy, and the chief. Oh, well, bring him along. Who is it? If I may, I'd like to bring the young man you got the tree from. You mean Bob, uh, whatchamacallit? Mm, Bob Clark. Splendid young man. Veteran. Recently lost his wife. Has no friends in the community as yet, and it'd be a nice gesture, Gildy, if you admitted him to your family circle on Christmas Eve. Well, all right, Judge. I sort of like Bob. Bring him along. What the heck? It's Christmas. That's very nice of you, Gildy. The more the merrier, they say. Yes, yes. Uh, Peavy, I suppose you want to bring your mother-in-law, too. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> You know, it'll be interesting to know how many of the people who use parquet margarine are listening to us tonight. Millions of them, I guess. Just millions of them. There certainly are millions of parquet users, Bertie. I was just wondering how many of them are listening now. I wouldn't worry about that, Mr. Wall. You can't listen to a flavor. You got to taste it. The way I look at it, as soon as you take some parquet, spread it on a hot muffin or a slice of bread and taste it. Mm -mm. 
From then on, that's the spread you're going to want on everything. Rolls, pancakes, waffles, just everything. Uh, it's delicious, all right, but that's natural. After all, parquet is prepared like a rare luxury food from the selected products of American farms. And it's as nutritious as it is good to taste. The best of ingredients plus 15,000 units of essential vitamin A go into every pound of parquet that you buy. Now, friends, in case you haven't tasted parquet, why not decide to try it tomorrow? I'm sure you're going to like parquet's light, delicate flavor. You sure will, because it tastes even better than it listens. Tastes like it should cost twice as much. So ask for P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet, the margarine made by Kraft that tastes like it should cost twice as much. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. He'd planned to confine this Christmas Eve just to the family circle. But, as usual, he has widened the circle to include all his friends. It's after dinner now, and the great Gildersleeve sits before the tree with baby Romery on his lap, enjoying a quiet hour before the guests arrive. Ah, uh, uh, by George, there's no time like Christmas. It certainly is nice to have you with us, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You're cute. I don't know how we'd ever get along without you. See all those presents there under the tree? A lot of them are for you. <laughs> There's some for Leroy, some for Marjorie and Bertie. But do you know what my Christmas present is this year? <laughs> yeah, that's right, you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir, baby, you're the biggest thing that ever happened to me. What's going on in here? A private party? Oh, no, Marjorie. We're waiting for you and Leroy. Where is he? Hi, Unc. What's up? It's time for our little family get-together, Leroy, before the guests arrive. Unky, who's this Bob Clark the judge is bringing over? The young fellow the judge is helping to get started. He's a little old for you, Marjorie. Well, hand me the book, my dear. It's time to read Was the Night Before Christmas to you children. You're going to read that again, Unc? Of course. <laughs> Naturally, Leroy. I do it every year, remember? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> It's a tradition in this household, and we're going to observe it. Anyone who doesn't want to hear it can just leave. Okay, I'll go upstairs. You will not. <laughs> you'll stay right here and listen, and you'll enjoy it. You understand? Sure. Here's the book. Thank you. You see, baby? There's a picture of Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you sort of like chubby fellows, don't you? Well, then, are we all settled? I am. Leroy? Sure. If you get stuck, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my boy. Now, uh, um, it was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care. Hey, I wonder if Bertie had lent me a pair. Yep. <laughs> Leroy, please. Well, then where were we? Oh, yes. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team, gave a whistle, and away they all flew, like the down off a thistle. <laughs> But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, Happy, Happy Christmas, Christmas to all, all and, and to all, all a good night. night. Well, thank you, my dear. Hi, George, that's a great poem. I love it. Yeah, not bad, Unc. <laughs> Look, the little baby's asleep. Better take her up to bed, Marjorie. We'll bring her down when we light the tree, huh? All right, Unky. Come to Marjorie, baby. <laughs> Uh-oh, here they come. Well, don't open the door till I get her upstairs. All right, Leroy, go put your coat on. The guests are coming. Okay, I'll... Coming! Well, is this where St. Nicholas lives? <laughs> come on in, Judge. Nice to see you. Look at all the packages. And Bob, well, I didn't see you back there. Merry Christmas, my boy. Merry Christmas, Mr. Gildersleeve. It's awfully nice of you to invite me. Are you sure I won't be one too many? No, the more the merrier. 
Besides, you can help me, Bob. I can? You bet. We need a tall young fellow to put the star at the top of the tree. Well, fine. <laughs> Judge, you know where to hang your earmuffs. Yeah. <laughs> Take Bob's coat. And, Bob, you come with me. Sure thing, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, say, uh, where do you want me to put this little present I brought for the baby? A present for the baby? Oh, you shouldn't have done it. Uh-uh, business is getting good. Excuse me, Bob. Why, George, this is the way to spend Christmas Eve. Let's light the tree. Yes, Commissioner. I have to get down and relieve the desk sergeant so he can go home and play Santa Claus. Well, I'm sorry, Chief, but Adeline isn't here yet. Hey, that's right. By the way, Gilder, before everyone arrives, I'd like to have a word with you about Bob. <laughs> about Bob? Yes, Gilder. The reason I'm so interested in this young man... Tell is... me later, Judge. That must be Adeline. Hey, gang, it's Miss Fairchild. Let's everybody get under some mistletoe and see which one she smacks first. Yeah. <laughs> Careful, Floyd, or you'll get the smack from me. <laughs> Adeline, come in. I'm sorry I'm late, Doc Morton, but I wanted to get all prettied up for the party. Yeah, don't be sorry about a thing. It's Christmas Eve. All together now. Merry Christmas! To you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, Mr. Peavy. Gracious, what a reception. Oh, I certainly. Very pretty young lady. Come on, Adeline. I want you to see the tree. Care to stand over here by me, Miss Fatchild? Oh, thank you, Mr. Munson. But I see that mistletoe behind your ear. Oh, 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 oh. She's on to you, Floyd. I think I'll just sit over here by Mr. Peavy where I'll be safe. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Phoebe. Oh, Throckmorton, I think the tree is beautiful. Yeah, silver tip. <laughs> it's pretty all right. We have the old judge to thank for that. <laughs> so... hey, come on. Come on, everybody. Let's have another song. Okay, one chorus for Adeline. Come on, fellas. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. Yuletide carol. Fa la 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 Oh, boy, come and get it. Yeah, Leroy, save one for me. Uh, yes, sir, there's no time like Christmas. Great little party. Gildy. Huh? What is it now, Judge? I want to talk to you about Bob. Judge, you've already talked to me. He's a fine young fellow. And after the first of the year, I promised to trade at his market. Now are you satisfied? Gildy. You better get back to the party before the popcorn's all gone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just listen to the fun they're having down there. Gildersleeve, you're a mighty lucky man. Good friends and a fine little family. Marjorie, little Leroy, and our little baby. Yes, sir, this is the best Christmas Eve I've ever had. Well, Bob must have brought her a music box. I'll peek in and see how they're getting along. Well, baby doll, I'm glad you like the music box. Well, uh, look at him in there. I, I hope I can give you a lot of presents as you grow older. Hmm? That is, if, if Mr. Gildersleeve will give you back to me. Give her back? And I think he will. He's a swell fellow, baby doll. If I hadn't been sure of that, I, I never would have left you in his car. Sounds like a terrible thing to do, doesn't it? But after we lost your mother, I... I didn't know what to do. All I could think of was to get you in a good home where you'd be loved and cared for. While I went away and tried to get straightened out. And... Well, when you get a little older, I'll, I'll try to explain it to you. So that's what the judge was trying to tell me? I... 
hope Mr. Gildersleeve will see it our way. It'll be pretty much up to him whether or not you come back to your daddy. But I can make a home for you now. And your grandmother's coming. You'll like her. My little baby. He can't take her away from me. Why did he have to come back here? Are you ready, Yucky? We're waiting. Gildy, where are you going? I'm going for a walk. Gildy, wait for me. thorough investigation of Bob and the circumstances surrounding the case. Bringing you together seemed the only thing to do, Gildy. The hard part, of course, was trying to tell you. I'm sorry, Gildy. You've been very considerate, Horace. Of all of us. Now it's up to you to decide what you want to do about it. I know, Horace. I know. You could put up a fight for her. Let's go back in the house, Judge, before we both catch pneumonia. I know what I'm going to do. I needed some air, Leroy. Well, hurry, Yankee. Bertie's going to sing her lullaby. Oh, well, fine. Mr. Gildersleeve? Huh? Oh. What is it, Bob? Wouldn't you like to hold the baby? Yes, Bob. I think I would. Thank you. Uh, little baby. Tree, huh? Yeah, what are we waiting for? Yeah, come on, Gilly, let's light it. One moment, everyone. Please. Before we light the tree, there's something I'd like to say. All of us wanted to make sure our little baby had a wonderful first Christmas. Well, it's turned out to be more wonderful than any of us ever anticipated. The baby's father has joined us on this Christmas Eve. He's a fine young man, and I know he'll provide a good home for the baby. Here you are, Bob, your little daughter. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve, for everything. Thank you very much. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Now, Bertie, it isn't as though we won't be seen. She'll be right here in town. Well, what's everybody so quiet about? This is a very happy Christmas for all of us. Father and his daughter have just been reunited. Let's light the tree and sing our carol. Anything you say, Commissioner. Gildy, this is a big thing you've done tonight. Oh, Unky, I'm so proud of you. Now, my dear. Gosh, I'm going to miss the little kid. Leroy, stay close to me. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Merry Christmas, and God bless you. This is NBC.